Hey guys, so um, this video um, is probably going to be really long and I don't think I'll get emotional but I don't know because I really haven't like told this story in depth in a really long time. Um, I keep looking down because I have like notes about everything because this time of my life is really... Um, it's honestly just like the darkest part of my life and um, my past. I've always wanted to film this or either make a video to really just get my story out there. And um, this is also kind of just a video of my testimony. So this is my 19 and pregnant story. I don't know why I'm so nervous to film this, <laughs> but um, I... This is a really long story, so I just hope you guys take some time to watch this full video. Watch it till the very end. Um, yeah, so I guess let's just get started. Um, before I get into me finding out I was pregnant, I should probably tell like the background story of my life. Um, I grew up with um, you know, Christian parents, Christian home. We went to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. That was just our lives. And um, I was just one of those kids who, you know, you would try to be living the right way, but then you just fall into worldly temptations. And especially when I got into high school is where it got really bad. Um, I just one, I just ran ran from God. I mean, just to put it plain and simple, I would be a completely different person at church than who I was at school. Um, I was a partier. I'll just put, I went and looked there. at pictures um, to refresh my memory of like the dates and stuff because I have blocked this part of my life out so much. Um, and it's kind of crazy, but my mind has literally blanked when it comes to this. Um, this part of my life because it was just such a dark um, place for me. I started dating Hayden's dad when I was a junior in high school and he was a freshman in high school at that time. We dated for three years um, off and on. It was a very toxic relationship. It was my first, my first boyfriend. Um, I think I was his first girlfriend. Um, definitely the first serious relationship for both of us and um, very early in the relationship, I gave him something that I could never get back, and um, and I, I mean, I, I gave him my virginity, and just from then on, it just spiraled down, and I became obsessed. Honestly, I became stuck. Um, I was addicted to being with him, and not letting anyone be anyone else be with him. You know we would break up off and on all the time he would cheat on me all the time it was a very toxic and detrimental relationship to me I mean it killed my self-esteem I used to be so before dating him I was so confident and I mean if you knew me I had no self-esteem issues or anything but when we started being together I felt like I had to prove myself and I mean if he looked at another girl I had to show show him that I was better and and that turned into me tearing down other girls and that's just not who I was but that's just what the relationship forced me to become and um, I was very very hurt by this guy and um, and I don't want to make this story about him because that's not what this um, video is for. So moving on to Christmas break of my senior year, I ended up moving out of my parents' house. They did not want me to be with him anymore and I didn't care. Um, I was so addicted to being with him that I ended up um, getting emancipated. I was already 18 at that time. I became my own guardian, basically. Um, and I moved in with my friend Ashley and her parents. And so for the rest of my senior year, I lived with them. 
Um, and so I just had to tell that story because that has to do with something later on. Um, so yeah, I mean, that just goes to show you already how <laughs> toxic this relationship was. I literally chose this guy who cheated on me and who treated me horribly and I chose him over my own family and um, and that was just the devil's scheme basically in my life. I mean he he knew what it would take to um, tear me down and to pull me away from God even more and I let him do that for a while and so I moved in with Ashley and her parents and then we, so we graduated in the summer. I turned um, 19, June 10th, and I remember I spent my birthday with him, and then a couple days later we broke up for whatever reason. Um, I just, I don't even know why um, we broke up all the time, like I said, so it wasn't really a big deal to me. I knew we would get, to get, get back I together. just remember waking up one morning. Um, it was a couple days after I turned 19. I... Um, I woke up one morning and I had had pregnancy scares. I mean, anybody who engages in sex, it's pretty common. Um, even if you're on birth control, even if you use preventative measures. I, and I just woke up and I was randomly like, I think I'm going to take a pregnancy test. And so I went and took one and I really didn't think much of it because I'd taken them before. And like, obviously you get those butterflies where you're like, oh my gosh, like, I hope it's not positive. Like, I'm just waiting, and so, you know, I went and peed on the stick, like you're supposed to, and I looked down, and very clear, it said, positive, you are pregnant. And I just remember feeling so sick. I started throwing up immediately. Um, I haven't thought about this day in forever. Um, I remember I was at Ashley's house, and I went to their bathroom, and... I just started throwing up and um, I immediately called him. Um, I remember he was in summer school at this time. So I called him, or I think I texted him and I said, you need to go to the bathroom. I need to call you right now. And he was like, he calls me, he said, what's up? I told him, I said, I'm pregnant. He said, okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna be a family. We can do this together. Like, And that, you know, calmed my nerves for that moment in time. And we hung up. And then immediately after that, I checked um, Twitter and he started just tweeting obscure things to girls that it was just like, clearly he was not going to be there for me. I remember we didn't talk for a whole week. Um, he actually ignored me for a whole week. And um, I went, um, I mean... What would you do when, if you were 19, you found out you were pregnant and the guy is ignoring you for a whole week? Um, I went crazy just thinking. My mind was just spinning. I didn't know what I was going to do. You know, I, um, I had a volleyball scholarship at the, um, for college I was about to go to. And I just knew that that was going to be taken away from me. And I was just thinking of all the things that... I wish I wouldn't have done or all the regrets that I've made up until this point and it's just so crazy to me how life happens like this you know it's just you just never think it happened to you and it does and um, you know it's the biggest blessing and uh, I would never change it for the world um, I mean I didn't think I'd get emotional um, Okay, so I remember before the whole week of him ignoring me had gone by, um, I ended up deciding to call my mom because I wasn't living there. Um, we talked some, but nothing, nothing like a normal mother-daughter relationship would after I moved out. And I called her just crying, and um, I said, can I come over, please? And she's like, yeah, come over. And they live like five minutes away, so I drove there, and I get out of my car, and I'm just bawling. And um, she comes out, and she just hugs me, and uh, I just said, I'm so sorry. And she knew. she. I just remember she said, are you pregnant? And I said, yes. And she just held me out while I cried. And um, 
I remember my dad was inside and she said, do you want me to come get dad? And I was like, I cannot tell him this. Like, I'll break his heart. And he's like, she said, we'll just go in together. I was, I was like, okay. And I went inside and I just remember like, it was just the sweetest moment. Cause I sat down there and, and uh, my mom was like, do you want to tell him? And I was like, I like could not even speak. I could not get a word out. And um, she said, I can't remember how she phrased it, but she just said that she's, she said she's pregnant. And my dad, without even a skip, like, he just came and hugged me. And um, I don't even think he cried or anything, but I remember he, he put his hand on my belly and he said, I'm going to be a grandpa. And just from then on, you know, like, I just felt way better about the situation. And they were just so supportive and, um... I mean, that just meant the world to me because I just felt horrible in that moment. I just felt like the lowest of lows in my life. And, um, oh, I gotta stop. <laughs> After that, I went back to Ashley's house and a couple days passed and, um, he had so not contacted me back. So I ended up just going over to his house and telling his mom that, um, we had something to tell them because, I mean... I didn't know what else to do so we told her and they were very upset but she said okay you are gonna be in this kid's life and you are gonna be with Brittany and so I ended up moving in with them and um, I lived with him for about the first six months of our um, of my pregnancy The relationship surprisingly was decent during that time. Um, at first it was very rocky just because he just did not want to become a dad and it was very apparent and um, it was hard but it was it was getting better. Um, but I remember during, it was right before Thanksgiving, my brothers came home and um, both my brothers are in the military so they would randomly come home for like holidays. and. and I remember Brandon um, stayed after Daniel had left and I remember we were in like a parking lot as a, of a restaurant and he was he just drove me around town we were just doing random things and he was like why are you with this guy you know why why are you with him you know like you could do so much better don't let this pregnancy determine your life and I was like I'm not strong I'm not strong enough to leave him and I just remember he was just like, I will take you. I will go with you right now. We will go get your clothes and we will go get everything right now. And you can move back in with mom and dad. They want you to be back and you will be so much better without, without him. And you can do it and we'll do it together. I was like, okay. And you know when your big brother is like, we're going to do this together. You just get, you know, motivated and encouraged. And so... We went over there and I got my stuff and he helped me pack all, everything out of there that day and we took it to my parents' house and um, from then on, um, I, did, I remember um, we I had told him that we were just going to go on a break because I'm just going to see how this goes because, you know, I wasn't ready to leave him. I felt encouraged but immediately was regretting it when I moved back. I mean, that's just going to be the complete honesty. I, um, I mean, I still wanted to have that security blanket of, like, we're just on a break right now, like, but I still want to be with you, but I just need a break right now. And he seemed like, yes, don't leave me, but we are going to be on a break right now. And then I remember that night I got a call from our school swim team. They actually called me, and gosh, this night was crazy, but... And I'm not going to get into details of this night because it was just a mess. But um, they told me, they called me and said that, I hope you know your boyfriend has a bunch of girls over and um, they were partying at his house. And I was like, wow, like I leave for one night and this happens. So I went over there. I turned into a big fight. I ended up staying at his house that night. And in the morning, we woke up, and he said, I'm done. 
and he's like, I, we just cannot do this anymore. We cannot keep going back and forth like this. I'm done. And I honestly thought that this was just going to be another breakup where we get back together. You know, I was not that worried about it. Like, for sure, I was, like, kind of upset. I really don't remember how I felt at that time. But I just, I remember thinking, like, okay, this isn't going to be a big deal. Like, we'll be back together in a week. And um, so I went back to my house or whatever. And then I didn't hear from him, from him for, like, a couple of days. And I was, like... And from then on, we really were done. We never got back together from then on. And that was when I was six months pregnant. And um, honestly, like that, I mean, each time we broke up, it hit me hard. But this was the real breakup, the real um, separation that threw me down into the darkest place of my life. Um, I was, I literally cried every day. Um, I mean, my parents would, I would just be in my room just crying. And my parents would come in there and just be like, you know, come out in the living room and, you know, just come talk to your family. And, you know, they didn't really know how to, how to do that. They were just trying to be there for me and they encouraged me to come to church with them. And I remember like a week after I went to church with them and I think it was like an outpouring time. We had a guest speaker, and it was like a Friday night, and I remember I walk in, and I'm six months pregnant, and I hadn't been in church in a while, but I I walked in, and I just, I sat in the back, because I did not want to be in the front, and I did not want to sit in the front because I was pregnant, but I just didn't want to be in the front because I was just broken, and I was just crying, but my um, my dad sat in the back with me, and I just remember that they asked the, the, um, the speaker to come back there to pray with me, and I remember that he prayed for me, and, and at that point, you know, I just decided, like, I can only go up from here, like, I have to start making better choices, I mean, there is nothing else for me in this life but but God I didn't really know what I was gonna do from then on but I just knew that something had to change and um, so I remember I rededicated my life um, back to God that day or that night and um, and I don't want to say like and then from then on I was perfect because that would be a bold-faced lie I mean I um, I started to be better, you know, make better decisions. I definitely thinking about my decisions, but, um, I, I never, I just decided that I did not need him at that point. Um, I think that was just the biggest decision was I was not over him by any means, but I knew that my, I deserve better and my daughter deserved better and, um, that I was going to fight the devil's um, plans for my life and that I was not going to just settle for what I thought I deserved. <sighs> Fast forward a couple months, so that would be about eight months pregnant at this time. Um, I, at this point, he was not really that involved. I didn't really hear from him that much, and I didn't care. I was actually the best I had ever been at that point uh, when I was about seven, eight months pregnant, and I was so excited to have my daughter, and I just knew when she would be born that she was going to just bring such a joy in my life. She was going to change my life. She already was changing my life, and um, gosh, this this story is so long just to kind of explain the story I um um he would make very poor choices for his life and um, unhealthy choices I don't really want to go into detail but and I don't want to say I didn't either I definitely did um, in my past and um, and I hate that I did any of that stuff, but it makes me who I am today. So I had told him, you know, if you want to be there for your daughter's birth, you have to be um, making better choices. And 
um, March 3rd, I was induced um, into labor. I was, she was due February 24th. I was induced and I ended up having to have a c-section because my body just would not go into labor the best moment of my life and um, I still have the video I'll probably insert pictures or videos throughout this time um, just to give you a glimpse of like of my life back then um, cause Ooh, cutie pie. Oh, look at that hair. <laughs> Oh, we got a nipple. Okay. Nipple crack one. Oh, you don't congratulations. Yeah. Show them the kitty. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, beautiful. You look like your mother. You don't like that. You like the needle. Yeah. Like the needle. There you go. That way my mom is. You like it. That's what I would do. That's your baby girl. Look at that pretty lips. She's so And um, I remember my mom was in there with me um, in the surgery room, um, and I would have not been able to get through uh, my labor without her. Man, I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know how girls do it without anybody there. Um, my mom was my rock and my hero. She still is, but um, she was there for that. And um, I just remember when I first heard her cry, I just started crying. And um, I just knew that everything was going to be okay. And I had hope. And um, I just knew that my my time was not over. And um, um, he ended up coming later on that day. I ended up letting him come later on. And so after that, a few weeks went by. And he would be in her life um, like... A couple times here and there um, nothing nothing special and um, I I just knew from then on when she was born that I needed to make the best choices for my daughter I was not going to listen to anyone's opinions who were not of godly authority I just became that strong mom and I you know I with a c-section took care of my daughter day in and day out and I mean if you're a single mom, like, shout out to you. You are one of the strongest people ever in this world. And um, especially if you had a C-section during labor because that that hurts. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. That really hurts. And it's so hard to even get up at night, let alone when you're tired and exhausted and you have to get up with the crying baby. Um, luckily, Hayden was a great baby. She still is such a great kid. And um, I'm so blessed with her. So, in August, um, I remembered, um, well, well, so there's this guy, <laughs> he's now my husband, but, um, this guy in my church, um, we'd known, it, known each other since high school, um, we always kind of like flirted with each other type of thing, but it just never turned any, into anything, he definitely liked me more than I liked him, but, um, I remember we started talking, and he... He wanted to date me and I had like let's see if it's August so March April May June July August so I had a five month old baby at that point and I was so like I am not ready for a relationship you know I had been in one since my past definitely not shy if you know him but I was like I don't know I remember I went on a date with him uh, we went to Applebee's and we went on a date and then you know, he spoiled me, he he treated me like a princess, and, you know, naturally, I told him that night I didn't want to be with him, <laughs> because that's what girls do, they don't like being treated nicely, because, you know, <sighs> anyway, so I remember I was just like, I just don't want to do this, I can't do this, I'm not ready for a relationship, and, um, and at that point, I really just think I just wanted to do my own thing. You know, I had been in a relationship for three years, and then I got pregnant. And so I'd never been able to just, like, live my life single and do what I want. And because, honestly, I was starting to go back to my old ways, you know, not dating guys or not being with guys. But I wanted to go back to partying and, you know, getting to enjoy that life that I got, that I had felt like I missed out on. And 
I remember I, this was just me fighting myself all the time. I was just fighting myself so much. And um, I, I remember I was in um, church one night and I, this is when I told John I didn't want to be with him. So it was like a week after that and I was in class um, and our pastor's wife, Kathy, she, um, I was in like the single woman's class and where Kathy said, if you're looking for a good man, you need to become a woman that a good man would attract. And I mean, at that moment, it just hit me like, if I want a man for Hayden and a man for me, that's going to be the godly representation of our family, of our house, I need to become that good woman that a good man would attract. And so like at that point, I was just like, okay, I'm done making bad choices. I need to become what Hayden needs for me and what I need for myself. And um, I remember like a couple, um, like a week or so later, I remember I messaged John and I was like, okay, I'm, I want to give this a try. And because if you know John or if you know his story, which his story is a whole nother video that we could talk about, but he's just not like any other guy you, you've ever met. Um, he didn't drink, he didn't cuss, he didn't do drugs, never had done any of those things. And um, he was just all about doing the right thing, no matter what, not compromising whatsoever. And like that was just such a foreign concept for me. And like I honestly just felt like I hit the jackpot with him. Um, and I was just like, I mean, if this guy wants me, he wants me like... <laughs> I don't know who would want me with a five-year-old child, single mom, like, working on herself right now, but if, and I was just thinking, like, God, this must be, this must be what you want, because I, I don't know how else this would have come about, and, um, I remember I was, like, I went to, a couple of weeks later, I went to a vital conference, and, I, um, which is just like a church conference for women, and I went there, and I remember they had us pray about something. Um, we wrote down something to send to ourselves like a year later, and I wrote down, I am deserving of a good man, I'm deserving of a, of a Christian, a good Christian loving man, and, um, I remember leaving that conference and I told John, I was like, I definitely, I want to give this a shot and I want to go in full heartedly and I want to try this because I feel like this is what God wants and I feel like this is like you are what Hayden needs and you are what I need and I just feel like this is right. And um, so from then on, we started dating. Right off the bat, you could just see John fall in love with Hayden. Um, I feel like even more than he fell in love with me in the beginning. And I mean, if you know Hayden, you know she's such a sweetheart. And so she, you know, just loved him immediately and was all over him. And very quickly, I, I remember the first night he called, she called him dad. She said, Dada, or my Dada, is what she said. And he, like, you could just see it in his face. He, it just looked like he was about to cry because it was just, like, so sweet. And at this point, I think when the more that John was entered into our life, the more um, her biological dad just kind of backed away. He didn't really try. He hadn't really tried much anyway, but um, I just started not even hearing from him at John all. proposed May 14, 2017. And that was Mother's Day. And <laughs> You're my best friend. You're a loving mother. You're an amazing woman of God. I couldn't imagine my life without you.
thank you God. I was just like, this has to be exactly where I'm supposed to be and everything that I went through in the past was building up to moment after moment of being blessed and for us to walk in God's path for our life and I mean so he proposed on Mother's Day and and um, I'll post a little video of that just for you guys to kind of see what that was. And then September 9th, 2017, we got married. And um, so after that, you have to be married to begin the adoption process. So following that, we started that process, got a lawyer and everything. Um, and then I think it was two weeks ago. It was October 18th. John adopted Hayden. Um, her dad actually signed his rights away about, um, about three months ago. Um, went to the courthouse and signed his rights away so um, John was able to gain those rights and adopted Hayden as his own and she's she's known no one else besides him anyway so she was she had no idea what the trial was about but she was just overwhelmed with love by everyone who showed up I honestly I have wanted to make this video for a while but I just didn't know how to go about it or what words to say to truly impact um, anyone who watches this video. But I just knew that God wanted me to make this video to share my story, one, um, just for his glory, let alone, but also to give hope to those girls who are either in a toxic relationship and they think that there's no way out. And, you know, I pray that it does not have to come a pregnancy story for you. I just pray that you would understand that you you should know your worth and God's God's value on you is so much higher than any any guy anyone in the world has for you. God loves you so much and he has a great plan for your life and even when you get off track, even if you go down the wrong path, you know, you I know I make um like beauty YouTube videos and stuff, but honestly, I felt like God wanted me to make this YouTube channel to really reach those girls and reach those people who think they're so lost and I am a walking testimony of God's glory, of God's faithfulness. You know, I thought I was so lost. I thought I was hopeless and I want the girls who think they're so lost to know that God sees you and he loves you and he has such a great plan for your life. Don't think that any situation that you are in determines you and determines your life because it doesn't God determines your life and you determine your life and it is never too late to run back to God and it's never too late to come to God when I started going back to church and like started taking it so seriously and um I just knew that God had a plan for me and he had a plan for Hayden he had a plan for our lives and that I was going to just follow him and um no matter what, I was not going to let anything stand in my way. I was going to live for God. I was going to live for Jesus. And he took my broken heart. He took my broken life. And he healed it. He turned it around and transformed it into what it is now. And I am the happiest I've ever been. And I'm so blessed. Every single day I just look around and I'm overwhelmed by God's love. Um, overwhelmed by his faithfulness in my life. And... If you know me, you've seen it firsthand. Um, if you go to my church at all, and if you know me and my story, then you've seen it with your own eyes, my transformation. And, I mean, I give all that glory to God. I mean, he, he is so good. He is so good.